Redditors who have gone to war with a neighbor. What's your story? Story one. My parents' neighbor keeps blowing leaves onto my parents. My dad tried to confront him several times and each time the guy literally ran away. Yes, a grown man dropped his leaf blower, ran inside, locked the door, and pretended he wasn't home when he saw my dad walking several times. My father is not a terrible person. One day my dad was finally able to stand up to him. He was extremely polite and said that the boy could blow leaves into their woods but not onto their clean lawn. The guy replied, Your property only starts 10 feet from the road, so there's nothing you can do about it. If you want me to stop, sue me. Road. So my dad called the monastery and asked if the neighbor was allowed to drop leaves on their lot. Turns out they don't like it. So now instead of having a neighborly argument with my parents, he's trying to fight a bunch of nuns in court. Not a very good look. Story 2. Two neighbors. Let's call them A and B, who hated each other. Neighbor A was really proud of keeping his lawn pristine and caused neighbor B no end of grief with things like leaves and lawn clippings ending up on his lawn, even if just through the wind. The police were called several times. This went on for a year. Neighbor B got fed up and planted clover on his lawn on purpose. He waited for it to flower, and then installed an industrial fan to blow on A's neighbor's lawn. I aspire to this masculine level of pettiness every day. Story 3. There was a poor neighbor who lived downstairs. They made all kinds of loud cows until late at night. Usually music and friends. One day I had enough and after about 10 minutes of very loud music I just started stomping on the floor. He broke out of his apartment and knocked on my door. I replied, looking very confused. You need to stop stomping. I'm trying to work. I didn't stomp. Yes, you were. I danced to your bad music. Turn it off and it will never happen again. It never happened again. Story 4. When I was in elementary school, our neighbor's four dogs were always pooping in our yard. Mom asked the neighbor to pick it up many times, but he never did. So every morning before school, my mom would send me and my brother on the poop patrol. At first, we just put the poop in the neighbor's yard, but our neighbor never got the hint. Then my mom made us put poop on his porch, and then he got a fence. <sighs> Story 5. Well, it all started one day when they were installing a fence, and one of the workers accidentally broke one of our tomatoes at the base. So she decided to take it in and cook all the green tomatoes into this incredibly delicious Indian dish that I can't even begin to pronounce or spell, and brought it as an apology. Then we made fresh pasta and gave them some to return the container because we certainly didn't want to leave it. Then they had the audacity to cook us something from the Indian desert that tasted like hev- By then our garden was beginning to fruit. So we gave them two bags of produce that would have gone to waste, and they used the eggplant dish. So we brought out the cookie tray. And here it is three years later, and we're in a heated war over who gets to eat the other one. We lose the battle because they are vegetarian, and we are not. So we have to modify most of what we do for them but we have a huge vegetable garden, so we have an advantage. Story 6. Years ago, my upstairs neighbors were wanted criminals who lived in a flat rented by a woman's brother. They sold sweets from there. They spoiled all hours of the day. Loud music from 8 a.m. to 12 a.m. Locked their daughter outside for hours, so we did things with her and they gave her snacks, but you could tell that her social and educational development was very behind. After finding pictures of them online on MN50 Most Popular, I called the police and they didn't believe me. They called me a kid. I was 22, and the neighbor's behavior got worse as more people reported them. It took them four months and dozens of phone calls to finally get the police to arrest the fugitives they were allegedly looking for. Story 7. We had problems with our former neighbor. He would come and yell at us over the most random things, never really been wrong, and or B, not really our fault. One day he came on a Sunday morning, rang the doorbell and rang our doorbell, throw a tantrum about some vines growing on the back fence. My husband went back there with him to check everything, and sure enough, they were growing on the neighbor's side. Another time, my husband was on our porch washing a couple of flower pots, and a dude came out of his house, started yelling at us about splashing dirty water on his yard. We weren't. He also called the fireman on us for smoking joint. Just a lot of little weird incidents. He was a relatively normal guy in his 40s with a job, a wife, and two kids, and we live in a nice suburb. LOL, it wasn't like it was some crazy old lunatic. They sold the house move last year, thank goodness and later we found out they were divorced, probably had rather big financial problems. I guess it was the stress of what was going on in his life, just taking it out on us. Story 8. Background. I ride my bike to the train station almost every day. Before going outside, you have to cross the sidewalk for a huge amount of 10 meters. Edit, since a lot of people think I drive fast on the sidewalk. I go as fast as a normal person goes on their bike, but not too fast. If I put one foot on the pavement, I would stop in an instant. One day he runs into me and accuses me of almost hitting him with my bike. Now I don't know what he was talking about since I've never been close to him, but he insists on it. Fast forward a few weeks and he's complaining again that everyone keeps riding their bikes on the sidewalk. And he's scared for his life that people are going to hit him because he's deaf in one ear. 
He also doesn't look where he's going and trusts the other ear. But that's beyond the story. After that, I talked to him to stop complaining. Told him that I will walk very slowly, and in front of his house I will watch him. Fast forward two months, and suddenly, an intermediary appears, saying that my neighbor wants to talk, but does not want to do it himself. Keep adding here since we talked about it before. I said if he wants to talk, he can just knock on the door and we'll talk. Never had a problem with him before, so I don't know why he would now. Nothing came of it. Fast forward another two months, and suddenly, the police show up at the door. The neighbor filed a complaint, not only against, but also against my other neighbor, who, by the way, doesn't even know how to ride a bike, for riding on the sidewalk and almost hitting him. Explain the history of the police. They were friendly, helpful, and understood my point. They advised me to be careful around his house, which I already was. A month later, another intermediary appears, wants to talk with us together, and now I refuse. He had many opportunities. That was two months ago. I wonder when his next complaint will be. Story 9. My new neighbor was a freaking relationship freak. Every night I heard him his boyfriend. And they were loud. I live in a house with enough space between my house and his house. Even with the windows closed I could hear them howling like wild cats. My husband finally had enough. So he went to the house next door to politely tell them to cut it some slack. The next morning he found a giant dildo with a symbol underneath stuck to the hood of his car. With the words, fudge you, stuck to the side of the car. His new car. The cops were called. They denied. We had it on camera. They were methamphetamines. Don't do meth, kids. Story 10. Now fighting with two young women who live opposite. I'm a pretty live and let live guy, so it took a long time. I ignored the overgrown lawn and the piles of leaves they raked up and left there to rot. I didn't like the various cow gathering on their lawn, but it wasn't enough to spur me to action. I didn't like the parties they threw every weekend and kept me awake or made me close the windows and turn on the air conditioner. But I didn't call the city. Even then I was not shouted in the middle of the street at four in the morning. What finally confused me was that someone had two kids. The oldest is about three years old. She shouts obscenities at him daily. The first time it happened, I thought, you shouldn't be doing this, but kids can lead even the smartest person astray. Then I realized that it is every day. I don't care what you spin. Flip, move, you little bad person. This cow screamed at him. The poor guy never says a word. It's like learned helplessness. I started listening to it and realized that she was constantly yelling at them and scolding them at home as well, although I couldn't hear the details. Just constant screaming. You better believe I called child and family services. I don't give a cow if these horrible lock my car at 4 a.m. If you treat a child like that, you don't deserve to have one. I am currently throwing regulatory hell at their heads through every channel available to me. I won't stop until those kids are taken away from her or she gets goddamn anger control. Story 11. On a one-week cruise, for the first two mornings, our neighbors on both sides were yelling ridiculously loudly in Spanish and kept waking us up. We didn't go to bed until 3 or 4 in the morning, so they slept. On the third night at about 10, 11 p.m., we go to our room, blast the TV. Note, TVs on cruises should be programmed not as loud as we did, and leave it on until 3, 4 a.m. You could hear it outside our door. It was very loud like them. The next morning, the neighbors realized that other people could hear them and kept quiet for the rest of the cruise. Story 12. Live in a dormitory with a shared kitchen and toilet. One neighbor refused to buy toilet paper and always stole groceries. During the summer vacation, he and I lived in the dormitory and he continued his practice. So I made a stew and added a lot of laxatives to it. I also left only one roll of toilet paper in the bathroom, which was covered in the power of itching. He gets mad, but I laugh when he tries to scold me for it. Story 13. I live next door to theirs. They would start around 11 p.m. or midnight and work until dawn. The Brooklyn cops were clearly on edge because they told me repeatedly throughout the day that the place was closed and yet they showed up three or four times a week to break up fights. I asked one of them why they couldn't shut down the place at 4 a.m. one day after a particularly loud fight, and they wouldn't even look me in the eye. We had a huge amount of beer bottles because I was also using the place as a performance rehearsal space, so at one point I would start throwing bottles out the window to smash their back door when they were making noise. They really hated it, but as I mentioned, what were they going to do, call the police? So they eventually succeeded in quieting the noise. It seems to have worked. In the end, they were ennobled. Apu. Well, if the police won't help us, I guess we'll just have to take the law into our own hands. Chief Wiggum. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people do that these days. Story 14. We called animal control about their dog. This is what aggravated the situation. So basically, our neighborhood has been around since the 20s. And while it's expanded in my lifetime, it's been strictly blue-collar for most of its existence. There are still about eight old families left here. Four of these families are linked by a clan knot of marriages that I would have to ask my mother about. One of their farms was our neighbor. We are one of the other old families. But aside from the fact that my grandmother and their matriarch were good friends, this clan does not love us and never has. 
They had a German shepherd. He was unfixed, territorial, and allowed to run freely. He was a constant problem, chasing and barking at me and my sister. Once he jumped on me and tried to bite my hand. He did bite my sister. He didn't have time to tear the skin, thank God. We had to call animal control a few times. It finally got to the point where we had the evidence we needed for animal control to get the courts involved. And then everything exploded. We started getting annoying phone calls late at night, which my parents were able to trace to a 7-11 payphone, where our neighbor's oldest daughter's boyfriend worked. After that, we got the subscriber ID. Some more unpleasant things followed, which I don't remember very well. The most important thing I remember was after classes were over for the... I went down to get the mail paper, and something shiny caught my eye on our gravel driveway. It was a roofing nail, and it was not the only one. Went over and told my mom who called my dad at work and asked him to check the tires. Fortunately, because of the gravel, all of the nails were mostly pointing down and didn't go into the tires. I grabbed a magnet and pulled out all the nails. It was a whole box. My favorite part of this ordeal remains the fact that Dad had already planned to re-roof that summer, and we used up all those nails in the process. Other interesting moments in the long-running family drama. When I entered the second grade, one of their cats had kittens. One of those kittens decided they liked me and actually moved into our house on its own, despite my father's repeated attempts to return him to our neighbor. That's your cat. Hold him, keep him at home. They then told their youngest daughter that we had stolen the cat and turned all the other kittens over to animal control. She held it against me for a while until she learned that her mother actually took care of all the other kittens. The fearsome German Shepherd really mellowed out a bit as she got older. He did get pretty far into our property one time, even after the drama, because they still didn't keep him on a leash regularly, even after the county fined him. But our tiny elderly tabby cat chased him away with a vengeance, who had no intention of putting up with that cow. Watching that nasty, nasty dog run away at full speed because he saw our old toothless cat chasing after him is still one of my favorite memories of her. The summer before graduation, I received a job offer at a local dry... My father was a bit concerned as the manager, M, and our neighbor were sisters, and although they didn't get along, he didn't know what to expect. It ended up being a great job, and M was always happy to hire me during my college vacations. My sister also ended up working there. After about a year there... A.M. admitted to me that she interviewed me almost entirely to spill the beans on her sister, and she was pleased that it worked out well for the store in the long run. Story 15. I told this story about a year ago. Many years ago, as a student, I rented a downstairs room in an old post-war bungalow. Originally, there was a nice old guy up there, but he left, and this horrible hillbilly family with a dog moved in. The wife was the worst piece of human garbage, always angry and yelling obscenities at her children and husband all the time. The fellow drank like a fish. I don't think I ever saw him sober. Living with this harridan, I have no doubt why. During the day, the harridan was usually drunk and or stoned into stoop. So instead of letting the dog out into the yard, she just let the dog downstairs. In front of my door downstairs was an area about 20 square feet, and the cow dog was there. It started once a week, but quickly got worse. I tried to talk to them about it, but this mean person literally yelled at me, told me that since the cow was on my floor, it was my mess. I called the landlord several times, but he didn't care. I was paying my very cheap rent, and that was all that mattered. I looked at all sorts of things to stop the problem, but there was no such thing as tenants' rights back then, and as long as it was happening in a private residence, they weren't breaking any laws. I didn't want to hurt the dog. He was actually a nice, friendly lab sheep mix. Huge dog with huge poops, but other than that, we got along well. Apparently, the problem was with the owners. I had to endure another three months. I had nowhere else to go and I couldn't afford to move on the spur of the moment. I needed three months' rent in my pocket to pay a new damage deposit and a down payment to get a new apartment. I had to skip meals and stopped using the car to save money. I didn't tell them I was leaving and left when they weren't home. I collected dog cow for a few weeks in a five-gallon buck. It was about three, four full. Before I left, I returned it to them through the mail hole in the front door. On their floor, so they're mess, right? Story 16. My neighbor's gonna fight me because I got into a fight over his dog. I like well-behaved dogs, but I don't appreciate it when a dog messes up its nose while its owner just watches. So I asked him to tie up his puppy. He did everything but use a leash, build a barrier in the driveway and train the dog. I don't have to cover my crotch anymore when I get home, so I don't care. My extremely sweet but extremely gossipy downstairs neighbor asked how I was handling the obvious disobedience and disrespect. I told her that I actually prefer that arrangement because I believe in the freedom of dogs but the off-leash route is supported by law and seems less confrontational than the behave-and-train-your-dog route. She must have let my feelings slip because he now steps up to take my parking spot, seeing as it's one spot closer. It's a small parking lot, so not for anything other than small stuff. The fact is that I also prefer this location. 
I parked under a tree and dealt with a ton of bird cow. Space is limited, so I considered it my cross rather than make my neighbor deal with it. His banana step saves me a weekly trip to the car wash. He's the best worst neighbor I have ever had. I can't wait to see how I get revenge next. Story 17. A few years ago, my parents had a problem with the neighbor's dog pooping almost exclusively on their lawn. My dad worked a lot away from home, and my mom is too shy to say anything and just picks it up. She complained about it all the time, but never said anything to the neighbors. One day I had had enough of her complaining to me, so I went to a neighbor's house to discuss the matter. They replied that they simply could not keep a dog in the yard. I suggested unplugging the cable, and they said they would look into it. No tie-down cable was purchased, and the dog continued to poop in my parents' yard, so I went back to let them know it was still happening. This time they replied that they would start collecting it immediately. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to mow my parents' lawn, and guess what I'm doing? I grabbed a plastic bag and collected nine cow piles, tied it up and left it at my neighbor's driveway. Went to mow the lawn, then went home. Later that evening, my mother calls me and says that her husband came and she went to get her bag. Next week I go back to mow the lawn and there are three ten-foot piles of cows on my parents' property. I took a nine iron and sprayed them all over the house next door. I grabbed a lawn chair and a beer and waited on my parents' porch for the neighbors to come home with my poor iron. The man sees this and runs, cursing me on the road. I told him that every time I find a pile in the yard, it gets the same treatment. My parents don't own a dog, they shouldn't take a dog cow. His wife yells at him in the background, telling him it's not worth it and to go inside the house. He calls me a bad person and walks away. Never had a problem with the cow again, just dirty looks. Story 18. Lived in a dorm with five other guys in college and had to move into a dorm because of the quad building. It was common how 40 feet move. Below us were soccer players. They were a rowdy bunch and would often party until 3-4 a.m. with loud music and booze. Often we could feel the floor vibrating and we called security to get them to calm down. As we were moving, they decided to throw an egg at our door. We called security who claimed that there are no cameras in this hostel. So using that information, we pushed them back and called security. They said they knew we did it. They saw the footage. But if they punished us, they would have to punish the footballers too. We also learned how to stop their music by trying to connect to their Bluetooth speakers. <sighs> Story 19. The war is still small, but our neighbors shared a driveway when we moved in. But the entire driveway is on our property. Well, we eventually caught them outside and told them we were putting up a fence and gate because of a problem with the utility company. Don't worry, they were tenants. The fence is going up. Two weeks later, the owner of the neighboring property appears. He must be in his 80s. He gets out of a huge truck and tries to pull out fence posts with his hands. I'm sitting on the porch at the other end of the house waiting for this guy to have a stroke. We were finding remove the fence so I can use my driveway or else notices attached to the fence. Story 20. Back in 2009 to 2010, I was fighting with my downstairs neighbor. She hit the ceiling with a broom and I aimed my woofer at the floor. I became pregnant with high-risk twins and got a temporary handicap placard to park closer. She borrowed one and took my place. It was months of outright war. Then I had twins. I'd be damned if we didn't stop flipping through each other, and this woman was the only person who helped me. We became best friends and remain to this day. We are still laughing about our stupid war. Thanks, Heather. Story 21. That's a lot of background, but here's the final highlight of our experience. I woke up in the morning and went to the car to go to the store. My driver and passenger doors have deep scratches. Neighbor's cow children were carrying gravel to my car. She calls the police, the kids confess, the neighbor says she'll pay for the damage, then denies it when she learns the damage is nearly $3,000. Our insurance covers it, but we are filing a civil suit against them for the deductibles we had to pay. Plus the cost of the security camera we removed after this event should have done it sooner because their kids broke a lot of our stuff. They tried to fight the lawsuit with a bunch of absolute nonsense, which we won, but they left town a month later. Story 22. This is about 20 years ago. Tried to ask him to back it off and was verbally abused and tried to fight me several times. The police wouldn't make a cow. I bought a 2000W system for a year for a group I was in and had to store it in my apartment for a few weeks until we modified it to move it to our warehouse. I dug out the worst sounding tape I had, a bootleg of one of their early Motorhead concerts, and put the speakers right next to our shared wall. I knew my neighbors on the other side were on vacation, so there was no chance of disturbing them. Cut the treble and boost the bass, turn up the volume maybe 25%, hit play and get to work. Did this every day for a week? For some reason he quieted down after that. Story 23. The dog continued to gnaw at the old fence, making excuses as to why he didn't want to pay his half for the replacement fence. We didn't have to pay anything as it would have been structurally sound if his dog hadn't kept chewing holes in it and escaping into our backyard. We decided to start leaving our side gate open. The dog would chew on the litter and then go roam the neighborhood. After the third pickup from the pound, he decided to buy some lumber and patch up the holes. Story 24. 
When we lived in the suburbs of Los Angeles, we had a trucker who lived with two kids. His son was several years older than me and constantly harassed me to the point where I either didn't go out without my older brothers or didn't go out at all. One Saturday around noon, I was inside playing NES while my dad and my brothers were playing basketball on the porch. My mom was at work. Our trucker neighbor came outside and yelled at my dad for playing basketball so loud, so early. I mean, it was 12.30 on a Saturday afternoon. That's when I went outside. My dad told us to ignore him and we, now I joined, went back to playing. A few minutes later, he came back from the side with a knife, took the ball from my 14-year-old brother's hand, and burst it. It was at this point that my dad told us all to run to the neighbor's house across the street and lock the door, which we did. I saw my dad arguing with this nasty truck driver until the cops showed up. The ranger took one hit and my dad took at least three! The police arrested him on a tip for assault with a deadly weapon, and a month later we moved across town, which was for the best. Huh. Story 25. There was a neighbor who let her children go upstairs and play on the porch of my apartment. It wasn't much of a problem until they started leaving a mess behind. I asked her not to let them on my front porch, and she let me know they were allowed to play wherever they wanted. The garbage and mess lasted for a good four months. One day I came home exhausted and my driveway was covered in sidewalk chalk and paint. So I bring out a bucket of water and start cleaning up only to have her yell at me from downstairs that I'm wetting her porch and ruining her welcome mat, her all-weather rug. So I dump a bucket of water on my porch and it runs over her while she complains. She decides to checkmate me and start smoking at the top of the stairs, letting her other hand breathe freely into my apartment. I complain to management and they tell her about the laws about 25 feet from any work entrance and she has to breathe in her house or off the premises. This bad person removes the screen from his bedroom and stands in his house smoking from the window. Our apartments were arranged in such a way that they did not allow ventilation from the front, so the breath constantly reached my apartment. Then I found out that you can buy skunk spray online. Apparently hunters use it for something. I lined the tracks of her windows with it. She finally started leaving the property to breathe, and her children stopped visiting my porch. Hum. Story 26. When my parents' neighborhood was developed, our neighbor was friends with the developer and made his yard smaller than ours because we share a drainage ditch in the middle and they didn't want to pay property taxes for unusable square footage. Now we have new neighbors and they keep cutting our grass because they think it's split right down the middle. There are city tax and property records to prove it, but they keep doing it. If I go to my parents for grass, they will quickly run out and circle the perimeter of their yard before I get to it. I know it's small and over six feet of grass, but that's the story 27. Aaron and Aaron? Cute, huh? I've been such assholes since the day we moved in with them across the street. We were excited to have our first house. Excited to move in and get to know our neighbors. They seemed normal at first. But it was their snarky comments about how they couldn't wait to move out of the neighborhood, how bad this neighbor was, how sloppy that one was, etc. Parking on our street rotates nightly to prevent abandoned vehicles. Behind our house, there is an alley with a garage for two cars. But there is no parking space outside the garage in the alley. We had three cars, so one was parked outside. They have a private driveway with a two-car garage, so they can park more cars off street. To make it easier, I would just park my commuter car outside. Since I drove it every day, it was easy just to make sure I parked on the right side of the street. That means three nights a week I parked in front of their house. I leave the house one morning to find a full-page note written by Aaron under the windshield wiper telling me that my car is parked in front of their house, where their friends and or family should be able to park if they decide to come over. I ignore it, but set up a video camera pointed at my car in case they decide to escalate the situation. Nothing happened for about a week, and then one morning I came out to find my car locust-wrapped from bumper to bumper and top to bottom around the doors. My pocket knife is sharp. I swiped it and threw it on their lawn. When I get home, I park on my side of the street, go inside and watch the video of my car from the night before. It clearly shows two people coming out of their house and wrapping my car around 3.30 in the morning. After dinner, someone knocks on the door. This is the police. They want to talk about a report that I threw a big ball of trash into my neighbor's yard. I don't dispute it, but instead invited the officer inside to watch the video. One showing people coming out of Aaron and Aaron's house and wrapping my car, and the other showing me cutting it off and giving it back to them. He thought it was priceless, told me not to worry about anything, and went back to talk to them. I realized when he told them that he knew what really happened because he heard Aaron scream about it. I kept parking in front of their house because I was cheating on them. At the beginning of autumn, a rat Chevy S10 appeared in front of my house. He never moved and just got tickets for parking on the wrong side of the street. It also had expired tags. The video camera showed how a guy drove up, got out and walked down the street. A couple of weeks later, I called to report an abandoned car with expired tags. Police officers appear, inspect the car, and check the license plate. They deal with the cops, and after a while a tow truck pulls up, 
and Aaron runs out of the house and starts barking at the cop who waves the tow truck away and lets Aaron move the truck into his own driveway. That bad man bought this truck from his sister and parked it there just to annoy me. There have been other times, like when I put up a winter decoration, this three-foot-tall plastic light-up penguin in December, which my son adored. In the first week of January, I receive an anonymous letter addressed to Mr. Penguin, letting him know it was time to go home. Other neighbors received similar letters. I'm not 100% sure that Aaron and Aaron are responsible, only 99% because everyone else is doing their own thing. That year I decorated that penguin for Easter before putting it away. Aaron and Aaron eventually moved in and had some smart people move in with them. Story 28. So my parents have lived in the same house for 30 years. They live outside the city and have only one house close enough to be considered neighbors. For 30 years the house was owned by five people, good and some bad. However, their last neighbors have to be the worst. I still live at home, so this is a first-hand account. It started with the fact that one day my mother called me at work to inform that there was breathing in our yard from the neighboring house. At the time, I thought she might be exaggerating a bit. But when I got home, I immediately realized she wasn't. The breath was so thick and strong that you could feel it and see it from the road. So I immediately decided that we should go over and tell them what was going on. As if they didn't. But when we knocked on the door, no one answered. And there were no cars at the entrance. So we decide to look along the side of the house to see what's on fire, and we see that he left grass and yard trash burning on the ground by the cedar fence that divides our property, which is right next to their propane tank. We immediately start to panic because the fire is spreading. The propane tank could catch fire, and our house will be gone. So we decide to call the city, tell them about the fire, and send the fire department to put it out. The crisis was averted. My parents came later to discuss with them what had happened. He seemed genuinely apologetic and apologetic explaining that he was unaware of the fire regulations at the time. He gave us his phone number to call in case we needed to reach him if he wasn't home. Then about a week later, my mother was sitting in the backyard with our dogs when she hears about three gunshots fairly close. She immediately panics because one, we live in Canada and two, our property is zoned residential, meaning you can't use firearms on the property. So my mom calls the neighbors to ask what's going on. She tells them she heard gunshots and they reply, you're not allowed to have guns? At the time, my mom wasn't sure if they were allowed and decided to call the city to find out. They told her no, but the city went a step further and sent an officer to talk to them about the use of guns. After the officer finished talking to the neighbors, he came to our house to tell us that they denied having or firing any weapons. But the worst part is that now they think my parents called the police on them. But this is not the end. The last straw was when my dad mowed the lawn and the breath started to stir in our yard again. It's clear that grass has a hard time breathing in your eyes, so he stops and goes inside to tell my mom. They decide to just go up and talk to him, but when they drive up to the driveway, they notice that there is no no do it sign at the end of the driveway. They ignore it and walk down the path. Then our neighbor comes out of his yard and starts yelling that they are trespassing. An argument ensued, and when my parents got home, they told me that he planned to do whatever he wanted because it was his property. So fast forward to now, we can no longer go outside to do any yard work without starting a fire. He does his best to find leaves, wood, grass, and anything he can just to burn it. He also decided to hang the skin of an animal, deer or coyote, that he had skinned and skinned in a tree near the front of his yard, near our house. He also likes to often throw loud parties that last until the early hours of the morning. And he recently took up bow hunting, and likes to practice on the bullseye that overlooks our house. My parents are now too scared to do anything about it because they fear retaliation. This has caused my parents a lot of informational stress and anxiety and they feel their only option is to move. Story 29. This is so stupid. My neighbor was furious that I put up a bird feeder on my property, saying it would attract birds. I said, well, that's the point, to which he went on a tirade about how he pays taxes and the birds don't, and that they were destroying his house, blah, blah, blah. That was all well and good until I just stopped replying to him, and he brought up my ex-girlfriend, saying, no wonder that bad person. It was a peaceful breakup, so it wasn't acceptable to talk about on many levels. I resisted the urge to hit him right then and there, and calmly got into my car, went to the nearest Lowe's and bought some more bird feeders to hang around them. I glared at him the whole time I was installing them. Two years have passed and he hasn't spoken to me since. I've never had a problem with him before, and I rarely even talk to my neighbors because I usually stay away. Story 30. It's pretty late, but my ex-girlfriend had a terrible roommate. She wanted to be responsible for the utilities, and my ex was paying her half directly to her. She would just put the money in her pocket and spend it on whatever she wanted. Then the utilities would shut off, and she would stay with her boyfriend for weeks, while my girlfriend was without electricity or internet. I ended up letting her stay at my house and renting a puck with a 4G hotspot, so she could work on her college coursework from her house if she was there. She ended up selling her rental early, 
turning her key over to the landlord, and we moved all her stuff out about a week early. All of a sudden, my girlfriend gets a text from her landlord saying she won't get her deposit back because the roommate said my girlfriend left dirty dishes in the sink and let her brother's dog sit on the couch and poop all over the place. Suddenly, the roommate developed a dog allergy. We explained to the owner that the roommate was walking the dogs, but the owner said that the roommate explained that the couch was damaged and there was feces all over the place, so they were going to give her a security deposit so she could clean the couch and carpet. Suddenly we realized I had a spare key to her apartment, and she had a few more days to move out. So I popped in and asked my roommate, Oh, I heard there's a mess. I'm here to clean up so we get our deposit back. I ended up washing my roommate's dishes and walking around the apartment with her to try and find poop. Didn't find anything. Got a recording of her voice saying that the apartment is clean and she is happy. The deposit was returned. Story 32. I lived in an apartment complex where most of the doors opened to an interior outdoor area. This neighbor would like to keep the doors and windows open while turning on the music and TV. This went on for months and the talks yielded nothing. So one day I got fed up and closed their doors. I could hear what the hell and oh hell no! They ran out with me, which escalated into threats of violence and such. I was wrong to slam, but that put an end to it. Story 33. My neighbor leaves trash in his yard. We have housing that is basically as fail-safe as possible. And this isn't some poor neighborhood. We're talking about 300,000 residents of Columbus, Ohio which is about as middle class as you can get in the Midwest. They don't tie the garbage bags, so some random cow falls out and flies into my yard. I took six parts I could find and taped them to their garage because I wanted them to be aware of the problem. All winter, they threw their plastic water bottles in a pile outside their garage, and it got bigger and bigger until the snow melted and it became too obvious. So they finally threw it in the trash. And if this is all too specific and my neighbor happens to read it, then put your trash away. You flipping Vernon Dursley looking at fudge. Story 34. In the late 70s, my mom had a horrible upstairs neighbor who played loud music all the time. She tapped the ceiling with the broom to get it to turn off. One day there was no music and my mother, an aspiring nurse, was worried. She went upstairs to investigate and found that the boy had broken his leg and was in a cast so he couldn't get up to continue changing the records. She, being a sweet person, took care of him and yes, children, my father met my mother. Story 35. In the second year, he lived in the residential complex of the college. The neighbors always left their garbage bags by their door, which was right across from mine. It's the south, so garbage smells awful in the summer heat. They left it there at the bottom. I started by leaving a note that they ignored, so I started setting up little fake horror scenes around their dumpster. For example, I would make a small tear in a trash bag, mix some ground beef with fake blood, and it would pour out of the bag. Then I would leave a trail of fake blood from their door to the bag. Probably got a lot of weird looks. Eventually they got the message. Story 36. The old neighbor when I lived in the city was the worst neighbor ever. Loud at night, no garbage service, too much traffic to not sell candy, and two pit bulls that were either locked inside or on a chain. Subsequently, his dogs were not socialized and extremely aggressive. Both dogs regularly got loose and attacked both my dog and me. I had a four-foot chain-link fence around my dog's entire yard, but his dogs would easily jump the fence and then attack my dog. After several conversations with him, calling the police, animal control, etc. I told him I would protect my dog if he wasn't going to control his. Less than a month after that conversation, his dogs jumped the fence again and attacked my dog this time, seriously injuring my dog. An emergency vet visit and almost dying. That day he found out that I kept my word. Edit. Because I get this question all the time, I them, they're both dead. I'm not something I'm proud of. Story 37. My parents' neighbor is quite eccentric. 50 years old. No wife, children, girlfriend. He married his yard and landscaping quite a lot. He got really upset about little things like tiny pieces of grass clippings on the road, not many. Walnuts that rolled into his yard from our yard, even where we put our dumpster on removal day. The trash can was big for him, to the point where he would come to the road and take pictures of where we put the trash can. It's all because he didn't want the trash juice running down the hill in front of his driveway, where he could track it down the driveway. Funny, I know. He would send these photos to the highway commissioner. The commissar would go out, come to talk to dad, just to get him to give the cow. He also had an ongoing argument with his neighbor on the other side, quickly becoming our ally in the war, and ended up getting a surveyor to check where his property lines were and mark this backfired for him as it worked in his favor against the other neighbor, but not for us. Come to find out, all those bushes he planted on the property line were on our side, not his side as he had planned. My dad went there and took it all down and made him move all the other plants he had planted on our side. Not to mention the four-foot privacy fence he built on part of our property that he had to tear down. It took him two weeks of working in his yard after dark when he got home to move it all. 
My dad honestly never cared for it as the bushes and everything else made our property look pretty too. But since he was always so bananas about everything, my dad took advantage of the situation and took it down a few pegs. Since then, the guy is very nice. Story 38. Neighbors from above. They continued to shout very loudly at each other and early in the morning, the landlord didn't do it. So I decided to turn on the music really loud. I first started with Kryptonite by Three Doors Down, slowly found more and more annoying songs and played them louder and louder. It ended with the Super Mario World Overworld theme, with my TV on 100% volume. The next step would be 8-bit music with my handheld surround sound, which has static issues with the speak. Story 39. It's kind of a one-sided war, but moved into a two-bedroom building. The women below me were in their 50 ES, I'm 25, and my five-year-old is autistic. The landlord told her before we moved in, that since my son's room was above hers, she could don't breathe anymore. She must have had a fit and threatened to leave. The owner lived in my apartment before me. So I'm moving and I know she doesn't like me living there, so I try to be nice. After we get settled, I come down to introduce myself and make a general offer of, if you need anything, let me know. Without a moment's hesitation, she listed the following, which she claimed her master had done. And since I had been in his old apartment, these duties now fell to take out her garbage every week, get her mail and give it to her every day. Her dog was not housebroken and she wanted me to clean all the water and cow every day, clean her cat litter box every day. Now the cans were less than 15 feet from her door, and the mailbox was right outside. And this woman is absolutely healthy. She goes jogging every day. I just stood there for a minute not knowing what to say. After a few seconds, she says, Well, okay? Landlord's name, it's been two weeks and I need someone to pick up the dog. I didn't say anything. I just walked away. About a week goes by. At three in the morning, I knock on the door. It's a woman. She tells me my cats are too loud. My cat is 10 pounds. She has to go to work in the morning. I told her I'll put it in the bathroom. She tells me it's not enough. I just say I'll see what I can do and go back to sleep. A few days pass and I notice the smell of cigarettes and candy. Now I can breathe, but only outside. We both have quite large terraces surrounded by trees. I complain to the owner and he talks to her. She pretty much ignores him and says that we with my son are too loud. There's a knock on my door when the host leaves and it's her. She tells me if she hears my son and I getting out of our beds between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. She'll call the police. Now I babysit most mornings starting at 6 in the morning and I asked what if I needed to pee between those times. She told me to hold it. I rolled my eyes and told her it wasn't happening. A few days after that, I have little girls I babysit and my son is playing outside. She comes over, can't do anything because the mailboxes are in front of her. Then comes over and whispers something to the little girl. I don't, I don't trust her. So I called the girl and told her it was lunchtime. When we went inside, I asked her what the women told her and the girl swore she told her to push my son down the stairs. Now the little girl's mom is very sweet, but she can be a bad person. So I decided it was best to tell her mom after I told her mom. She said she will be right back and started banging on the woman's door telling her that if she will even talk to her daughter, then push her down the stairs. It's been about a month since I moved. My son and I were at an event downtown. Fireworks, I think. We got home around 9.12. My son went to the bathroom. Got undressed. I had his pajamas in his room and after he got his blanket, he was going to get into them and go to bed. And went downstairs. We had an upstairs and a storage and dressing room downstairs. To get my blanket. Going to bed. I hear my son crying and screaming and my son running up the stairs. Poor little autistic five-year-old just having grown women yelling in his face. She keeps yelling about us being loud. I tell her to leave or call the police. Like this bad person not let in and scared of five. After that, my son ended up in bed spilling the water question because he was afraid to get up from beds at night. Smaller things happened like she went away for a week leaving her cat outside and when I called the SPCA, she claimed I had stolen her cat. The landlord said she would call about me having parties when I was at home. Complains about my cats. Said I was cleaning at 5 p.m. It was too loud and I had to pay by then. Decided to move because I couldn't take it. A few days before we all moved, she randomly brought me and my son cookies. Okay, strange, I thought she had done something to them, so I threw them away with her plate. Petty revenge. A few days after I left, I got a text from her friend, saying she bragged about the fact that she gave us cookies in which she put sleeping pills. Cool bad person. Could deprive us if we ate too much. After I moved out, I made sure I told everyone how obnoxious she was. The landlord had a hard time renting my apartment because of her. She didn't want someone living above her, but also didn't want to pay the extra 200 a month that one cost for her to live there. Also, as a treat, I paid someone to mash mashed potatoes on her lawn. If you don't know what it is, you take a box of instant mashed potatoes in the night before, or it rains, you sprinkle it all over your lawn, it gets wet, they turn into mashed potatoes, and they get stuck under the grass and they become impossible to remove. They start to spoil and attract all kinds of bugs. Story 40 my neighbor's cow is on my doormat, and then it's funny I told this story on Reddit once, but I'll be happy to print it again. 
One day I opened the door on my way out to run some errands and step on something on my mat. It came from a person. This fact is 100% undeniable. On the opposite side, my neighbor was outside and saw me step in the poop. He did it. That guy hooked a cow on my mat for no reason. I went back to my apartment, grabbed a wad of paper towels, and I picked up the paper towel cow and taped them right to the door. Just pressed on their door and it stuck like earth and clay. I took a picture and sent it to my boyfriend at the time. I can't tell you how funny it is to see poop stuck to someone's door. I'm going back inside because I've changed my plans. I want to see what happens next. All of a sudden I hear a bunch of guys on the other side going, Oh, what the? Turns out when they opened the door, poop started falling out of the door and bits of cow rushed inside. So now the cow is strewn in front of their door, on their door and inside the front entrance of their apartment. They start knocking on my door and I answer, Why did you put a cow at our door? Because you took it and I wanted to return it to its rightful owner. But we didn't do it, so who did? There are bears in there! Did you even think for a minute it could be a bear cow hibernating bears? And how cool is it they go up five flights of stairs and take the cow right onto the flipping mat? Well, dumbass. I heard you laugh at that. You were waiting well. It was boring, but... But nothing. Don't cower on people's rugs, you flipping animal. We exchanged loads of fudge with you and the day seemed to go on. That evening I went to work. I came back to find that the three of them had taken the cow, mixed it with beer, perhaps spilled the water, and thrown it through the step on a cow to roast it in certain places. The cleaning lady had to deal with this. I felt so bad that I tipped her. I left a note in the common area that we have a crazy bomber who goes around and on people's rugs. What should you pay attention to? A cow on a mat. Confusion, confusion follows.